Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Chai Time with Marwan Arani, where you will taste and believe some of the best Indian food you've ever had in your life. At least I like to think so. So, Chai Pani Mom at the helm. Hi, everybody. And look at this beautiful cup of chai today. Yeah, mm. yum, 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 yum. Mint, ginger, and we used some Surti chai today, didn't we? We got that packet from Ahmedabad. Uh, Vish, I don't know if you're watching, but if you remember, this is the chai that we picked up. I gotta remember the name. Hang on one second. Wait, wait, wait. A little shout out to our friends. <laughs> wait, I think I threw the bag away. <laughs> no! I said don't throw wait, the bag away! It's right, it's right there at the top of the trash can. Now we're all in an adventure ah. together to find out what this is. All right, here we go. Jivraj! Jivraj tea. We're gonna save this bag because this tea is incredible. This was tea that we picked up in Ahmedabad on this trip that we made to actually, yeah, it was in uh, Surat. We picked it up on our trip to India when uh, Wish, Shidi, Paul, Mikey Creme Fresh, and myself went to um, Gujarat. And the reason I'm talking about all this because I'm gonna make a dish that is near and dear and beloved to Gujaratis and Parsis in particular, a curry. And what a curry is is basically Parsi style scrambled eggs with, uh, with spices. So we either have onions, uh, tomatoes, cilantro, chilies, a little bit of ginger, I mean, blah, 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 a little bit of turmeric, and a little bit of Kashmir chili powder. So actually, let me rephrase that whole statement. Let's start again. <laughs> it's savory Parsi style eggs with lots of fresh herbs, green chilies, and a hint, a hint, a hint of turmeric and chili powder. So this is gonna come up for debate a lot. People are gonna say, well, a curry usually has this or that or garlic, or I've seen some recipes with cumin powder. My idea for curry is to do an English style soft scramble, which is probably where the Parsis get the idea for doing scramble eggs from, and then adding light, bright, herbaceous flavors and just the tiniest touch of turmeric and a little bit of this um, chili powder for taste. Anything other than that in my mind, and we're muddying the flavors. Not to say that you're doing it wrong, I just feel like my preference is for the Akori to be really bright, really fragrant. I'm fragrant. I want to taste the green chilies in there. I want to taste the cilantro. I don't want to make another Indian masala, eh, pun intended, um, <laughs> with all these ingredients, with, with all this other stuff that you can easily put inside. Not to say that if you want to do that, that you shouldn't, you know, get your spice on, but this will give you the cleanest version of a curry. And we're going to cook this low and slow. We want a creamy, almost custard-like eggs for a curry, and that's how I like it. And then the only way, the only way to do curry is either Parsi rotis or white bread. And I got some beautiful brioche white bread um, from Fresh Market. I'm gonna pop that in. Get that bad boy going. Sam wants to know where the ham is. Sam's in the house. Hi, Sam. Sam in the house. GT's in the house. Paul's in the house. Sam, the ham is <laughs> in the fridge. I'm having that as a snack. In fact, did I miss Vish? In, I think Vish is here too. Just in, just in your honor. Oh, what can we do? What can we do? I don't know what they're harassing you about. Something about ladling it. Ah. What does this mean? We're going to have a little <laughs> bit of mortadella. There's the ham. Mm. In honor mm. of Sam. Mm. In honor of Sam. All right, now that we got Kentucky in the house, let's do this. Mm. 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 Ham and chai, match made in heaven. Some very good job. He's rolling over in his grave. It's probably not the Gandhi, but. Um, beautiful cup. My good friend Raina Lee Scott. Happy birthday, Raina. Happy birthday, Raina. Happy birthday, Daniel Peach, if you're here. She made this beautiful set of cups for, it was a birthday, I think, right? An important one, our anniversary mm -hmm, for us. Mm -hmm. Everybody we know is born mm, on April 18th. For blue. Okay, let's get cooking. So, not quite sure what the history of a curry is, but it's probably one of my favorite meals. If breakfast is your favorite meal, you're going to love the heck out of this one. It's just the best of all worlds. Mm. All righty. Got some oil going in the pan, and I'd say it's probably about three tablespoons of oil. Uh, we gotta fry onions, so we want the oil to be. Is that just like a nonstick regular pan? Yes, yeah, so this is really important, guys. We are making uh, soft scrambled eggs. It's really important to have a heavy, either you have a heavy bottom, a stainless steel pan um, with a just a lot of oil, or a nonstick pan, because we want to work slow and scramble the eggs slowly and we don't want to stick them to the bottom of the pan and burning. So I got myself a nice heavy bottom nonstick pan. You can see it's pretty heavy. Oil's ripping. Let's get the onions in there. There's use, fish. Use a spat. Hi, fish. Fish, you missed me eating ham. <laughs> Just had some. But check it out. Jibraj. Made some chai today. Finally busted open my Suthi chai. 
Vish, were you with him when when he found the? Look at that chai. Oh yeah. Was Vish with you when you found the? um, Yes, absolutely. That chai. All right. Paul wants to know where's the ghee. Where's the ghee? The ghee. Tell him secret is coming at the end. Don't give it away. (laughs) Paul, I hope you approve of the uh, frying technique here. (laughs) All right. So these are all important things. Now, normally you guys have seen me prep as I'm cooking, and that's perfectly fine to do. I like being efficient. I don't like doing a lot of prep up front. I like to prep whatever I need to get in the pot quickly and then do the rest as I'm cooking. But in this case, because we have to work quickly, fast, and efficiently with the eggs, I went ahead and did all the prep up front. So I got tomatoes, onions, uh, cilantro, and I I found a jalapeno in the store. We are out of Indian-style green chilies, but I seeded it, took the pith out, and then just chopped it up. And I know it looks like a lot, but because I took the pith out, which is the white part, so how um, many is that? And that's, uh, that's about one jalapeno, yeah. And by taking the pith out, which is where the oil is that, that gives the uh, pepper its heat, and by taking out the seeds, and you take it out carefully, you don't want to like smash it because then you're releasing the oil into the pepper, you're going to get the flavor of the chili pepper without all that heat, because that's come out in that white pit. If you're wondering what pit looks like, eh, I got rid of it. There's a question about um, if you could use less oil since you're using a nonstick pan, or do you need that much oil for the onion to cook correctly? You need that much oil for the onions to cook correctly. Now, remember, this is, I'm, I'm doing eight egg dish here. So it doesn't seem like a lot of oil, but with eight eggs, um, you, it's gonna get used. You okay. could certainly try using less. Here's what I'm saying, guys. I'm just giving my preference for dishes that are um, done the way I do them in the restaurant, where essentially we're all about developing and maximizing flavor and less worried about how much fat content or cream or butter there is in those dishes which is what restaurants basically do. We want to indulge you when you come eat at our places. But if you want to back off it at home and figure out an effective way to do it, no problem. You can certainly use less oil. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily as, you know, creamy as the eggs will get, but you'll get all the flavor and that'll be delicious. So now, in Someone's the past, asking, wait, before you keep going, someone's asking what you put in so far. Just onions. onions. Just okay. onions. Okay, and now about, keep going. About three quarters of a cup of onions. Okay. Um, so, now in the past you've heard me talking about really browning and caramelizing the onions. We don't want to do that here. With this dish, we just want to brown them lightly, past, just past the sweating point, because we want to retain the sweetness of the onions. And we want to be able to taste them uh, with our eggs. Normally when you caramelize them, and then you add it to the rest of your dish for making a curry, the onions almost disappear. They almost sort of dissolve in the cooking liquid. Um, that's why when you're eating a, a butter chicken, you're not tasting chunks of onion in your, onion in your mouth. Think French onion soup, you know, when you want those onions to kind of almost become part of the soup. But here we don't. So onions have been lightly sweated and just starting to brown at the edges. See that? All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my, about most of my chilies. And I probably have about two tablespoons of green chilies over here. Why am I adding the chilies in now? Because I want the flavor to go into the oil. Think of oil as a medium that's going to coat and add that flavor to everything else. So the more you flavor the oil, the more the oil will then impart that flavor to the food. So that's why spices are bloomed in oil first, so the oil becomes flavored with mustard or turmeric or chili powder, and then wraps itself and coats the food and and gives that beautiful flavor to the food. And that's one of the key tenets of cooking Indian cuisine, is flavor the oil. You don't want to just throw spices into water or liquid broth, it's not going to do anything. There's all kinds of questions about how the haircut stands. Well, um, I'm having a flat day today, I think. The height's <laughs> gone down a little bit. Yes, we need a hair report. And um, um, I and showered this morning, so that probably flattened it down. I think the weight's starting to... I may be going from Bob <laughs> Ross to, I don't know, like uh, Oliver Hardy. You know? <laughs> the reality <laughs> maybe, is maybe I'm, still, I'm still too scared to cut it. All right. So my... Uh, green chilies are adding their flavor to the oil. They're cooking a little bit. Chiti <laughs> said, "Flatten the hair curve." Chiti, <laughs> 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 she wins. <laughs> she wins. <laughs> ding 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 ding. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Every time Chiti makes a joke, we're gonna have a shot of chai. Mmm. Oh my God, that is so good today, honey. Great job. Okay, let's focus on the cooking. Okay, let's do I know this. Hair is important. We're making a curry for everybody that asked. We're making a curry for everybody that Onions, slightly brown, um, green chili is starting to get translucent and, 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 and starting to cook around the edges. Let's get our tomatoes in. Now, in the past, you guys have seen me, um, what's the word? 
what's the word I'm looking for? Wax eloquent about the benefits of canned crushed tomatoes. And normally for cooking Indian style cuisine with their gravies, their sauces, Rosie. Um, come here, girl. Come here. Um, we want to use those canned crushed tomatoes because they're already crushed, they're ripened on the vine, they have tons of flavor. But here we don't want to do that because we want a light, bright dish. We want to taste the tomatoes in the dish. We want the tomato chunks to be still slightly there. And all I'm going to do at this point is evaporate the water from the tomatoes, but still have the tomatoes have some body before I add my eggs to it. I know, you guys thought I was just making scrambled eggs, right? Little did you know that this no. would be a 30 minute master class on the benefits and advantages of cooking at the right temperature <laughs> with the right amount of oil. Vish says you'd be yelling at your waiter if the Akori took this long at, at your <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> yes, that would be. <laughs> but he wouldn't have a team of his cousins harassing him while no, he was no, trying but, to make but it. Vish, but Vish, but Vish, yes, I would yell because you know how impatient I am. But when the Akori came out, if it was done perfectly, all would be forgiven. We would kiss the man on <laughs> both cheeks or woman that made it for us and say, well done. That's um, true. So actually speaking of um, a curry in Gujarat, um, while this is sweating. Hi, Farhan. Farhan! My <laughs> man! How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Um, I'm, you know, I'm open to criticism and feedback on everything. Apparently, <laughs> even the hair is, uh, is in bounds for criticism and feedback. All right. Almost done, guys. Almost done. And now I'm gonna put just, okay, see that, see that, see that, that's, that's, that's what we're going for. It's sort of not fried, but it's sort of lightly brown, lightly sweated, the water's starting to evaporate, and it's this beautiful um, wet masala, if you will. We call this a masala too, because it's wet, that the eggs are gonna fold into the eggs and keep it creamy. If it was fried and starting to get crunchy, it wouldn't do the same thing. Now, let me, Literally, we're talking just a touch, a touch, a touch. I mean, a touch Hi, of turmeric. Why are we doing a touch of turmeric? Because we want a little bit of that flavor, just a hint of it, without overpowering the eggs. That's what I mean by a touch. Wait, you're going too fast. That's a quarter of a <laughs> teaspoon. Okay. And you can put a healthier touch of the Kashmir chili powder if you like the red chili flavor, but I would recommend Doing a heaping quarter teaspoon. All that right. is the chili powder. Sam has a great idea. You guys need to do a Brown in the South Zoom for the next one with peanut gallery style. Pe I love it. Love it. I'll put a so giant <laughs> screen up here and you guys can all just make fun of me as I cook. That I would love be it. so fun. All right. So those, we're going to cook them because remember, we got to bloom in oil. Even, even ground spices. Don't just ever throw them into a liquid or a broth. Put them in the oil. Let them bloom in the oil. Can you tell me I'm getting excited? <laughs> Vish is dancing with you. All he wants Come to on, do Vish, is... Come on, Vish, dance, baby, dance, dance, dance. Vish wants to zoom a zoom. Zoom a zoom, zoom, and a zoom, zoom. All right. Mmm, 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 mmm. And my last little piece I'm going to do here is throw half my cilantro, and that's probably about a half a cup of cilantro, you know, loosely packed. Throw half of that in there and fold it because I want even the cilantro flavor in that oil, baby. And I'm saving the rest to finish the dish with so that still is light and bright. Capiche? Got it. All right, people. Okay, let's turn this off now, completely. And let's work on our eggs. Uh, so, we have here from Queen Bee Farm Farms, local North Carolina producer, some beautiful farm Wait. fresh eggs. Thank you very much, Owl Bakery, for that delivery. And Owl Bakery, thank you, at Owl Bakery, for the delivery. Really appreciate that. I got seven eggs in here. Why seven? Well, I was going to go for an eight-egg dish, but we're going to add a little secret ingredient here at the end. Well, we're not so secret, but an extra ingredient in the end that'll make it for that eighth egg. And let's go ahead and whisk. Now, many of you probably know this, especially my technically-minded chef friends, but don't add salt when you're whisking eggs, because all that's going to do it's forced the water out of the egg and make the eggs more runny. You season once the eggs are in the pan and start to cook. Or you can also season the eggs after you're done cooking. I mean, think fried eggs, right? You don't salt the eggs as you're frying them. You salt them after you're done. So eggs are one of those dishes where the salt can come in afterwards. Why right. seven? Vish wants to know, is that your lucky number? <laughs> it's, it's a lucky it is number. It's my lucky number seven. Seven yes. is a lucky seven number. Seven is a lucky number, seven eggs. Okay. 
and I'm whisking them well. I mean, again, there's, there's different approaches in this. Some people like seeing the whites of the egg in the scramble. I don't, I want a beautiful, uniform, golden egg color, so I'm gonna whisk them well. But I don't wanna aerate them too much, because we're trying to make basically almost like an egg custard. Show us Just, your little whisking tool, someone's asking about that. It's like a bent whisk, basically. It's like a bent whisk. It works well in small bowls, you know, because this big guy would fling it all over the place. Now, for two secret ingredients. This is the traditional whisk he's talking about. Wait, while people are joining, give us one more explanation of what you're making. We're making Parsi-style scrambled eggs called akuri. And what makes a curry such an incredible dish is that the eggs are scented with fresh cilantro, fresh um, onion, tomatoes, and just a hint of turmeric and chili powder. And it just elevates the dish to a whole new level. And the green chili, when you take the pith out and then slice them up and put them there, adds like a whole beautiful dimension of flavor to this without necessarily making it spicy. I don't want these to taste like Indian eggs. I don't want them to taste like a curry or a gravy or a masala or sauce. I want just the most delicious savory eggs you had. You know, no different than a beautiful quiche that's savory with all kinds of fresh herbs and vegetables in it. That's what we're doing here. So, we're gonna add a little bit of half and half to this. If I had heavy cream, I'd put that in there too. And why? Well, again, like I said, we're trying to make almost like an egg custard. Do you mean in addition to the half and half or instead of the half instead and half? Instead of the half and half, if I had heavy cream, I'd put a splash in there too. The creamier, the better. And what I have here in my bowl is some cold butter that's been cut up in little pieces. And as the eggs are cooking, we're gonna add little chunks of butter there to the end. Why cold? Because they'll slow down the cooking of the eggs to give it that more custard-like um, texture that we want for the eggs. Um, and of course, it's butter. So, well, Farhan has an excellent question before you go to the next step. What's the difference between akuri and burji? Um, I think burji is the Gujarati version of akuri. I think that's just what they call akuri. Um, and I've seen burji with all kinds of masalas in it. Farhan, I've seen it with garlic, I've seen it with ginger, I've seen it with cumin powder. And also, burji is usually, they cook the living daylights out of it, is ah. what I've noticed when I've had burji. It really is almost like a dry egg scramble. Mm -hmm. That's what um, Vish said, too. Yeah. Thank you, Vish. <laughs> Boom! We're on the same page. See, this Thanks is what I Vish around. Because one out of ten Vish, I get right. <laughs> <laughs> I get approval for mission <laughs> one out of ten. I think I'm right. <laughs> it doesn't also, it takes a village to answer all the questions. It does take a village to answer the questions. Okay, so I turn my pan off. Why did I turn my pan off? Because I don't want the eggs to start cooking immediately as soon as I hit the pan. So now I cool the pan down, right? And I put it back on at low, and the temperatures definitely cool down. And it's okay if the pan went cold uh, if you're cooking this at home and happen to be talking to all of your friends on Instagram. Uh, it's okay to turn the pan off. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna get my eggs in here. Let's, uh... Okay, folks, and again, like Vish said, these eggs are gonna take some time to cook properly. So we're gonna scramble, and this is why I wanted a nonstick pan so I can keep doing this. And this is why I wanted to use a nice rubber spatula so I can keep folding. The permanently turmeric stained spatula. Oh my God, what else are we doing with this thing? <laughs> this, right? this is it. And this is what you're doing. You're cooking close, you're controlling the heat. If you notice it's starting to cook and stick a little too much on the bottom, pull it off the heat. Let it cool, give it a second, and then move it back on down here. I know you're thinking to yourself, who the hell has time to spend 30 minutes in cooking eggs? But I promise you, it'll be delicious. And especially if you're making breakfast for a lot of people, serving five or six people, you're gonna really appreciate and how well this is done. You'll post this recipe on spicewala.com, right? This for recipe will be on spicewala.com. Absolutely. And also probably you can see the video will be posted on Spicewala's Instagram TV channel and my personal Instagram channel, at Marwan Rani. Not that I'm pitching myself or anything <laughs> like that. You know, it's not like... Netflix is listening or anything, right? <laughs> hey, why? Um, I know Google's listening, but hey. Yes. How long should it take to cook this many eggs in this style? In this style, it's going to take about three to four minutes to cook them, and you're going slowly. And the cooking process is going to speed up. It's it's not going to you know it's not going to look like this. It's going to start cooking more and more, and you just control the heat. And And oh my God. Now look, not everybody likes creamy custardy eggs. So if you wanted your pan ripping a little bit more and just throw them in there and do a quick scramble, it's still gonna taste delicious. The flavor is all there. How I'm cooking the eggs really doesn't make a difference to the flavor. We got all the flavor. It's gonna make a distance, dif difference to the texture of the eggs. And if you're gonna go through the trouble to do this dish, let's get the texture perfect, right? All right, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more. 
And to counteract the turning up a little bit more, we're gonna start adding some of our butter. Little chunks of butter are gonna melt in here. Oh my God, oh my God. Paul, this one's for you. You're asking about ghee, we're going with butter. You could probably do it with ghee, but the problem with ghee, ghee is at room temperature. Oops, see, see this on the bottom? See what's happening here on the bottom? We wanna avoid that. We wanna avoid a crust forming on the bottom there because that's not creamy, that's already cooked. So let's turn it back down, but all is well. And don't panic if that starts to happen. <laughs> um, I know, I know no cheese. No panicked egg cooking. Yes, no, we don't want anybody to take tension while making <laughs> eggs, okay? This is breakfast, the most important meal of the day. No tension. Maintain lean discipline and everybody will be just fine. <laughs> <sighs> all right, guys, so we promised three or four minutes and we're getting there slowly. Sam already panicked. It's too late. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, call an auntie. Quick, call an auntie. Auntie GD, Marilyn's effing up his eggs. What do we do? <laughs> Vish is pitching your um, spice brand at the moment. Thank, Thank you, you, Vish. <laughs> Appreciate it. A little bit more butter, because why not? And again, I know somebody's watching me saying, oh, my God, look at how much he's putting in. Guys, this is a special dish. This is like, you know, pancakes and syrup. You're not going to do that for breakfast every day, but if you're going to do it, do it right. It's like French toast, right? You're not gonna eat French toast every day for breakfast, but if you're gonna make it, let's make it beautiful. All right, guys, you see the curds are starting to form in the eggs, and this is what I mean by soft, creamy eggs. And we're getting close, we're getting close. It exponentially cooks faster and faster as the eggs start to solidify in the curds. So, very quickly, I'm gonna taste. Oh, oh my God, mm, mm. Gonna add a pinch Aren't you more, guys hungry now? Pinch more salt right now, because remember I said we can salt at the end. What do you have this on low? I'm trying to I have it on, I'm twiddling. Guys, I'm twiddling the flame Can't between really medium low to low. So I'm trying to get down a little bit when it's gonna feel like it's sticking too much. And then once it calms down, I crank it up a little bit and I'm managing the heat. And listen, this is the most complicated part of this dish. It's eggs and some chopped up vegetables, and a little bit of masala. So, you know, don't panic. <laughs> take the take your time, and don't freak out about how long this is taking, because this is the part you're doing. I mean, you could either sit there and watch something bake in an oven for 30 minutes, or you can get your hands dirty and take your time learning how to fold eggs gently and smoothly until they're creamy, unctuous, luscious, delicious, fantastic. All right, now, for those of you that like Fresh green chilies. Every time you say the word panic, Sam is panicked. And for those of you that like fresh green cilantro, Chichi wants to. Time. Chichi wants to know where the uh, quema and toast is. For yes, this. well, I will show you here, Chichi. She was late to the toast game. No, but what about the quema that yeah. you made last time? Because you have that with this. <laughs> my aged quema, Chichi. Yes, my aged quema <laughs> is in the fridge. It's only Wednesday that we made it, so it's not aged that much. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right, guys, done. I know it's still a little wet, but there's residual heat. This is gonna keep cooking this if it sits around. But these eggs are fully cooked. They're unctuous, creamy, delicious, buttery, masala-y, bright, fragrant. And let's serve it up. What do you guys think? They smell amazing. Mmm, mmm, mmm. 427, we got three minutes for this 30 <laughs> minute section and we're done. All right, Molly, bye. Let's find ourselves a beautiful little plate. Um, Let's go classic white on these eggs here. Mm. What brand pan is that that you're using today? Um, this is a, oh my God, I don't even know what, it, what this is. I, I know the company. Oh, a mole cheese. Um, That's Vicious idea. That yes, sounds good. Yes, yes. To sprinkle that on top. Sounds delicious. Oh, look at the eggs are so beautiful and creamy and coming off over there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let's put a little extra sprig of slightly Wilted cilantro on top. <laughs> that was a very chefy thing you just did, blowing on the cilantro. Now, this. If you want a little extra dollop of butter, I'm not gonna judge. I mean, cause you know, why not? Let it just melt and ooze over these eggs. And the trick to eating a curry, Parsi style, is crispy white bread. In fact, if you let it get, hear that? That's a curry bread. You don't want it burnt. You just want it light and fluffy on the inside, and that's why I picked a nice brioche because uh, loaf because it's going to be soft on the inside and it had that beautiful crunch on the outside. And you know, let's just go old school. In Vicious Honor, we're going to go old school here 
we're going to put some little toast triangles. I don't, know why, I don't know why I'm plating. We're not in the restaurant or anything. <laughs> but hey, you know, we're going to plate. Let's go ahead and plate up a little bit. Okay, folks, here we have it. A beautiful akuri with uh, some toast, and here's how we enjoy this bad boy. Mm. There's still eggs in the pan. I know, I know. <laughs> Paul's I know. very worried about the leftover I eggs. I know, and I would, yes, Paul, See? really good point. I wouldn't leave this in the pan because <laughs> unfortunately they'll keep cooking because of heat. I'd pull them out of the pan and of course serve it up to everybody uh, and get them out of the pan. Boop, That's awesome. my helping, Paul. Thank you. You guys and live too far away. Let me put this in. Do they have brioche here? on the side street joints? Fish wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. And I'm not saying that because I'm patting myself on the back. I'm telling you, when you cook with certain dishes, you're gonna have a one in three chance of nailing it. Sometimes you go over, sometimes you go under, you know, always adjust on the fly. These were nailed. I mean, these are so beautiful, crispy. And Vish, to answer your question, yes, we do have street brioche in India. It's called pao. <laughs> <laughs> Same idea. <laughs> Um, or the parsley salt. Don't worry, Chiti. The minute we turn this off, I'm stealing Marwan's eggs and he's going to eat the rubbery ones in the pan. Mm. Thanks for looking out for me. <laughs> uh, mm. I can't even. Look, <laughs> I can't tell you how much it is worth doing this trouble. It is absolutely 100% worth going through the trouble of what we just did here right now. These eggs. Fit for Sam, I'm waving at you. Sam's asking to see me. But I'm in my pajamas because we're always in pajamas these days. Next time. It's eggs fit for a king. They're just so delicious. I can't even explain to you how incredible this dish is, how these eggs have been completely transformed because of the freshness of the cilantro, the <coughs> onions, the tomatoes, and the green chilies, and that's really it. And please, 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 just try this. Don't put anything else. Don't even put pepper. Just a little hint of turmeric and a little hint of chili powder. Very and she steals the show every time. <laughs> I think, come here, where's he I think our hairdos are pretty alike. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a haircut more? <laughs> we, we both have the hair going. <laughs> um, so try this at home, take the time, be patient, cook the eggs low and slow, move the pan on and off the heat, and like anything else in life, the more you practice, the better you'll get. The worst thing that happens is you throw away about a couple of dollars worth of eggs. Well, you didn't throw them away, you ate them and they weren't perfect. Just keep trying again, trying again, because once you master this dish, you'll be able to make the most amazing breakfast the next time for any of your friends, I guarantee it. <laughs> so, until next time, friends, all of my loved ones, all of you Guju gang, Brown the South gang, everybody watching, thanks for watching. And I'll be back next Wednesday, um, open for just suggestions on what to cook. Uh, we might maybe do hmm, butter chicken, some lamb masala. Let me know what you guys want to see me make. And um, you can find the video at Spicewalla, on Instagram channel at Spicewalla brand, or you can also find it at Marijuana Run. Thanks. Taste and believe. Bye, everybody. <laughs>